Warm greetings to everybody. My name is Krzysztof Fenvesi. Together with my colleague Tina Makala, we are working in the Finnish Institute for Educational Research in the University of Jyväskylä in Finland. In this session, we will introduce computational thinking development in Finnish schools. More specifically, we will talk about one project which called Modeling at School. And this project is introducing this computational science-based concept of modeling in the learning of various school subjects. We believe that modeling can be useful not only for the preparation uh, for programming, but also in learning uh, primary school and also in uh, secondary uh, school education. Also, it can help to uh, develop problem solving or text comprehension. And also it can be a bridge, a link between different subjects, especially if you think about the STEM integration, which is the integration between science, technology, engineering, and mathematics related topics, but also in the STEAM integration where you add arts also into the uh, connections uh, between different subjects. In the beginning of this presentation, we will provide a general introduction of the Modeling at School project, especially the Modeling at School framework, which is freely available uh, to download. Uh, you will find also the PDF link uh, to this document. And then we will also talk about that how in European Union perspective in European education, how modeling and computational thinking uh, is uh, related uh, to various uh, goals. And then uh, we will have a few examples of practical application of uh, modeling in the everyday teaching, everyday learning, everyday uh, school life, and some specific diagram types, which we found especially useful in learning uh, different subjects. And in the end, we will also uh, introduce uh, how modeling can contribute to the development of key competences. And you will see also some classroom recordings when we and uh, Finnish teachers are implementing uh, these methods. The modeling at school framework is uh, focusing on modeling in a non-informatics or non-programming uh, setting. And the main aim is to support teachers and students in implementing in modeling in different school subjects and also in cross-curricular settings. The uh, structured uh, process for problem solving, uh, it can be really uh, boosted uh, by uh, modeling uh, techniques and algorithmic thinking. And it can also have a really positive impact when students need to learn very complex information and they need to see connections uh, on a structured way, in a structured approach. It uh, used to be told that the power of computational modeling is really that it allows scientists and engineers to simulate variations more efficiently, uh, for example, with a, with a computer, and it can save uh, time, money, and materials that uh, you can really uh, see complex uh, processes uh, you can also design complex processes more efficiently with the help of modeling. Just to have a very uh, simple uh, example, which is uh, taken uh, from the uh, United uh, States uh, Health uh, Institute. Uh, so if you imagine that you have a cake which uh, has uh, various uh, ingredients and you want to find out that uh, how to bake the best cake, for example, with 20 different ingredients, then uh, you can start to bake like 20 different cakes when you leave out a different ingredient of each time. So you can imagine that this approach uh, would be really, really 
uh, time consuming, especially when you start to think about the relationship between these various ingredients in the cake. And you not only want to leave out uh, one ingredient uh, during the baking process to test uh, what uh, consequences it has, but you change the amount and also uh, change the configurations uh, between uh, these ingredients. So uh, you can see that uh, in this uh, process, you can introduce a quite uh, advanced uh, algorithmic uh, method, uh, an algorithm for even for a computer simulation uh, to uh, simulate uh, these uh, different uh, uh, cakes and also to see that uh, how it affect uh, the final result uh, of, of, this, of this process. So if you just think uh, about the changing any of the two ingredients of these uh, 20 ingredients, you will need 190 cakes uh, to be uh, simulated. But if you think about free uh, ingredients, it's already more than a thousand uh, cake uh, would be required uh, to bake. And uh, if you just think about four different ingredients, you can see that it's almost 5,000 uh, different uh, cakes uh, would be involved to see the outcome of this very basic and very simple uh, example, just to be uh, introduced uh, on, on the example of, of the cake. So uh, computational modeling, uh, it has uh, its very uh, practical uh, purposes uh, when you want to study uh, various uh, complex uh, systems. You can see uh, diagrams how uh, complex systems uh, designed, for example, in weather uh, for forecasting, that how many different uh, equipment uh, need to be uh, worked in a synchronized uh, way and how complex data need to be collected and analyzed in order uh, to uh, have uh, weather forecasts every day in the TV, on the internet, or in the radio. But if you think about uh, complex uh, machines, uh, complex designs, such as the design of an aircraft, uh, you can also imagine that uh, very uh, complex systems uh, need to be worked together in order uh, to have uh, these complex uh, results uh, like an aircraft. So it's also require very uh, complex uh, modeling or also in studying earthquakes in seismology. But if you just think about, uh, look around uh, in your home, uh, most of your uh, household uh, household items, not even only the smart items, but even old school items like a really simple washing machine, uh, also implementing uh, modeling and algorithms uh, to run uh, those various programs uh, what you need uh, to wash uh, your clothes. So uh, this is uh, the real world application uh, of modeling, but uh, you can think about how to implement uh, these algorithms and uh, systems also in understanding complex information already uh, from the beginning of the uh, school. So really uh, from the primary school age, uh, when you uh, think about, uh, for example, uh, text, test, uh, text uh, comprehension. So modeling can be a useful tool to understand, to summarize, to present and memorize information. Uh, not only difficult contents, but especially as more uh, co complex uh, content, it is more useful to have uh, some kind of uh, mental image and also some kind of model uh, to support uh, thinking and also to describe uh, these uh, links uh, between uh, various uh, parts uh, of the information and also to develop uh, processes and also the perform various pro procedures uh, on information uh, modeling uh, can be uh, really useful. So it can be uh, very well uh, contribute uh, to 21st uh, century learning and 21st century skills. So my colleague Tina Makala 
uh, we'll talk uh, more about this in the next part of the presentation. Hi, I'm Tina Mäkelä. I'm Christoph Skolik at the Finnish Institute for Educational Research at the University of Jyväskylä. And now I will tell you a bit more in detail the different activities actions that we have taken as a part of the modeling at school project in particular and that Christoph already told you something about. So this has been the uh, a collaboration between um, between Austria, Finland and Spain. Um, this is a European Union project funded by um, Erasmus Plus program. And uh, in this project we, we were interested in introducing how how modeling can be used in the curricula, uh, particularly in these three countries, but but also everywhere. And we wanted to approach educators, educational leaders, and policymakers so that they could see the the value, the potential of of this kind of um, activities. Uh, we also we've also created guidelines for implementing modeling as a teaching and learning strategy. And we've been collaborating a lot with, with schools um, in order to collect example materials for this purpose. And then there's also a goal, a goal is to create a digital modeling tool to support this kind of uh, work at schools. Um, you, can, you can read more about this project at this web page, computationalthinking.guru. And there you can also find a framework um, for modeling that we, we created uh, based on the curriculum analysis, but, but we also focused on, on European key competencies for lifelong learning, because this is something that all European countries consider in one way or, or another. Uh, you can also talk about the transversal competencies or, or 21st century skills. Um, and so we, we analyzed, um, uh, we wanted to demonstrate how modeling uh, can be used to support competencies such as literacy competence, multilingual competence, or, or mathematical competence. How, for, for instance, um, in problem solving or, or when, when learning grammar. So we, we matched these competencies and and different knowledge skills and attitudes that can be developed in modeling and computational thinking. Um, also, also in relation to competence in science, technology and engineering. And for, in, for instance, in digital competence, um, this is very much about learning about the programming, but also about the use of different digital tools. And, but, but this is, uh, we wanted to demonstrate that modeling can also support, let's say, softer skills such as personal, social, and learning to learn competence, or or citizenship competence, or entrepreneur competence, as well as cultural awareness and expression competence. Um, there are different processes and well, problem solving, strategic thinking critical thinking, uh, expressing ideas um, that can be practiced uh, with the help of diagrams and, and modeling. Uh, but you can read more about this, these key competencies and their relation with the modeling um, when you go, if you visit our web page and, and check the framework. Um, this framework also includes some examples uh, of different diagrams and how they can be used uh, at schools. Uh, activity diagram is one, one uh, good diagram that can be used nearly for, for anything, for foreign language, political education, ethic lessons, um, a, for demonstrating grammar rules, chem chemical experiments, or... or writing a cooking recipe. Then another useful diagram is a use case, case diagram. For, for instance, uh, in physical education or economics, um, you can visualize cooperation, who does what and, 
and how with the help of this kind of diagrams. And then another useful diagram is the class and object diagram. This is particularly good for classifying different things. It can be geography, biology, informatics. Um, so this is one of the diagrams we've been using. And then also entity relationship diagram. That's, that's a good tool for visualizing and simplifying uh, even complex, complex um, elements. It can be biology, music edu education, basically anything. But now I wanted to show what we've been doing in, in Finland in particular, in relation to these topics. And it was actually when we started working with, with, with modeling in Finnish schools, um, it was the beginning of the coronavirus outbreak. And when we went to schools, we were still able to go to schools physically. Um, we used this, um, these instructions uh, for if you suspect having a coronavirus as an example of how even complex information can be simplified using the diagram. And so we started with this kind of example activities, but what we've been doing and what we always do with the, with the Finnish schools, um, we, we want to design the activities with the teachers. So we've been asking, we, we negotiated uh, what other topics they are teaching right now. And then we designed activities that really fit to what they are doing under the curriculum uh, that they, they are following. For, for instance, uh, at one primary school, uh, we visited handicraft classes and the topic they were dealing was uh, about the project design. And so, so we were using activity diagrams for, for demonstrating what are different phases in a, in a project, product, sorry, product design. Um, we've also had complete online activities, classes. This, this is one example related to physics and the, the different quantities based on derived quantities. We used a class diagram to classify these quantities. Um, in fact, uh, students were drawing the, the diagrams and then they took a picture and sent the picture to teacher. And that, that's the way we got to see how, how they work with the, with the diagrams. And then I, I, I have here one more example um, at one primary school. Um, let me open the video. Here we, sorry. Okay, so he, here we used a physical robot and we, we were discussing about the programming. Uh, but then we integrated uh, the use of diagrams to, to one activity related to how to eat candies um, during the coronavirus time. Um, so what other instructions, students created in instructions for that. And then they were testing them where they're following these instructions. You can really eat a candy. Uh, it included them. Um, washing hands and, and so on. And then we worked with the, with the ethics um, rights of the child in particular. Um, and children were, were creating like a board game instructions uh, so as to identify different rights of the child. Um, so basically, um, based on our experiences in, in Finland, um, we can see that modeling and computational thinking can be integrated to any, any curricular topic or subject. Um, and our experience is that teachers have been really, really happy to, to see how it can be done. And we hope that in the future, um, this can be applied, that those schools that have been participating in this project can then in the future also spread the word and, and the teachers with this experience can, can support the other teachers 
in this work. So thank you very much um, for your time. Um, if you have any questions, yeah, feel free to, to contact us. Thank you.